During this video, I will demonstrate the techniques I use on the new Intuitive Surgical 4th Generation XI platform to do a hysterectomy. I mainly use the Vessel Ciliary Extend as my primary instrument with the J-shaped uh, monopolar hook for my monopolar cutting device. It also can be used as a grasper. And last but not least, I use the long bipolar grasper at times during the case as a way of bipolar cautery and grasping. This combination of instruments I find to be highly efficient and effective and using the most advanced energy and instrumentation to do the hysterectomy. A small window is made in the avascular portion of the mesosalping so that the hook can be placed and pulled down in medial so that the vessel ciliary extend can be placed up and lateral. So there's an opposing action, down and medial with the hook, and up and lateral with the vessel ciliary extend. Notice the elbow's down and it's facing upward. See the ureter over on the right? That helps prevent from ureteral injury. And notice that I'm taking the end of the tube off last. The reason for that is if that is done at the very beginning of the case, before you do the up and lateral, um, a dissection, you lose that down and medial traction. See that? Now that the tube's disconnected, I have no way of counter traction. So I leave that for last. Now I'm going to go ahead and the outer one third of the round ligament, make a small little window, place the hook, counter traction's created, up and lateral release of the uterine of the round ligament, and then one more um, grasp there with that hook using a little cautery and then I'm going to finish whatever connective tissue and vessel that's left there with the uterus already up and medial we can go ahead and finish the broad ligament dissection this is another hysterectomy notice how I preserve that uterosacral ligament by going above it the opposite side can now be done same technique small avascular window with a hook down and medial up and lateral with the vessel still extend this is a really good example of that up and lateral direction. See how it's lifting away from the ureter and away from the uterus. This is a more avascular plane. It's a safer area to be. Using my monopolar hook I can create a little energy and that helps the hook stick into the fimbriated end and I can go ahead and place the vessel ciliary extend right underneath that fallopian tube. It's important to stay as close as you can to the fallopian tube so that you don't inadvertently injure the uterine ovarian vessels that will preserve ovarian function. Notice how I can pull on that fallopian tube so I can get right underneath it but stay away from the uterine ovarian vessels. Now that that disconnection is performed on the vessel surrounding the fallopian tube, I can release that round ligament out lateral and then place that hook right underneath pulling medial creating that traction crown attraction I can finish whatever vessels and connective tissue around the fallopian tube in the uterus stay away from the cornea of the uterus this is where a lot of people get in trouble with that hug and pray technique that's why I stay out lateral um, and that's why the uterus is up so I can see I'm away from the ureter I'm going to finish this peritoneal dissection posterior to release the ureter even more and there we go this kind of frowny face incision, taking down that uterosacral ligament off the colpotium incision, so I can go ahead and make that. I call that the frowny face, smiley face. You start with a frowny face to pull it off of the um, colpotomy ring, and then you can make that smiley face incision over the colpotomy cup so that this early colpotomy incision can be made. I do this on all my hysterectomies. This allows two major things to occur. One, you release the connective tissue around the uterine vessels, which makes them more plump and stick up so they're easier to grasp. And number two, you don't get lost during your dissection. So we're going to go anterior, back to the bladder, and then I'm going to take the peritoneum down. See how I pull up on the bladder peritoneum? I don't push on the bladder, I pull up on the peritoneum. You can see that big healthy bulge because we backfilled the bladder. We know exactly where that is so we don't enter. Um, injure it with the monopolar hook and now we can make that early colpotomy incision anterior releasing those vessels that are kind of right there at 10 and 2 o'clock 
and I'm going to release those vessels using the vessel seal extend. And the reason why that can be done is I create that little small groove so I can slide that vessel seal extend right around those. Same things will be done on the other side because there was a little bit of bleeding there. I went ahead and went medial first and then sealed it and then I'm going to go out lateral. On this right side, I'm going to use a different technique with the vessel sealer. I'm going to skeletonize the vessel and then I'm going to bounce the vessel sealer off the side of the colpotomy ring. This can only be done if you're pushing up with tension with the vessel sealer away from the ureter and there's no pathology out there that you can injure it. Notice how I went out lateral on a second um, seal and then I'm going to go medial and cut. It gives me a little bit of a pedicle so I don't bleed. Additional bite is taken right off the colpotomy ring. I release the pressure on that colpotomy ring so I can grasp it. And then I'm going to extend that colpotomy incision, making a small groove so that vessel can be captured in the vessel so they extend and finish um, sealing that vessel. Notice how cool this instrument is um, compared to all the other um, energies out there. It's a much more um, efficient use of energy with least amount of collateral spread. This side I'm going to do a different technique. I'm using the hook to pull the entire vessel into the vessel sealer extend. You notice I did the double um, sealing so they have a little bit of a pedicle there so no oozing and I'm going to release. See that little red line you saw there? I released a little bit of the connective tissue so I could slide that vessel sealer extend right behind the vessel. It allows me to very efficiently take that vessel without any back bleeding or any problems with significant collateral spread. So in a very relative short period of time, we took all those tissues with minimal charring. Here's a, another example of that groove. So you create that groove and you take a vessel seal extent and just slide it right over the top of the colpotomy ring. You're gonna notice I'm gonna go out lateral here again and do that, that um, seal out lateral and then I'm gonna go back medial and cut. I find it really is more effective at sealing the tissue. Also, you want to take a little pressure off the colpotomy uh, ring when you do take these vessels if you're worried about there being any back bleeding on the vessel. The more tension on the vessel, the more likely. You notice comparing this to bipolar fenestrated or the PK, it is by far a lot cooler instrument. And that's important because it has to do with that collateral spread of energy and harming tissue. It cools down very fast. You're not going to injure things by grasping them with this, the jaws of this. It cools very quickly. So this uh, colpotomy incision is finished with the cut current on the monopolar hook. Now I have my large suture cut needle drivers and a long bipolar grasper. The long bipolar grasper is one of the newer instruments offered by Intuitive Surgical and I find it superior to the Maryland or the PK and I like it more than I do the fenestrated bipolar because it is a better dissector. It has a lot of torque and strength to it more so than the other predecessor of Maryland and the PK. Notice this one five millimeter deep and five millimeter wide um, grasp of the vaginal mucosa. You want to incorporate at least five millimeters wide and five millimeters deep across. I do not scrimp here. I want to take nice, healthy, narrow bites with this uh, first layer closure of the cuff. Five millimeters wide, five millimeters deep. And the way to figure out what that is, is the large needle drivers have little marks on them. It, it equates out to exactly five millimeters as well. I'm going to do the other angle of the cuff. Notice that upward direction of the grasper that allows me to reach up and grab the vaginal mucosa anterior more effectively. I get both angles because most of the bleeding that occurs post hysterectomy where patients come back through the emergency room are from the lateral edges of the cuff and those are where the failures occur. So you want a really good purchase out there lateral. You want to be able to incorporate that support by the uterosacral ligament out lateral. Um, this aids to the level one support and very quickly I can work across here and finish closing the vaginal mucosa. I'm not incorporating 
um, the peritoneum posterior or the uterosacral ligament posterior because I'm going to do a second layer closure. I'm going to pass the first suture that was coming from the right side and I'm going to go right down in that uterosacral ligament. You can see the left side really effectively there and on this right side you're going to see that uterosacral ligament very well. And I'm literally placating that ligament into my support. This gives great level one support. Now watch this. And notice how I'm pushing up. I have an instrument going in the vagina. On the left is called the Apple Probe. Um, Rumi makes that. Or you can have those large blunt tip EA sizers. They both work very efficiently and it allows you to not accidentally incorporate the bladder as you're um, doing the second layer closures. So yeah, you can see that pubocervical fascia. I'm going to actually dissect it up a little bit so the bladder is away. I want to be able to incorporate as much of that pubocervical fascia as necessary to um, literally imbricate over the uh, vaginal mucosa suture. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie these together. I know that they say you don't need to tie the V-lock, but with the tension I have on the second layer closure, I do tie these. A nice healthy bite of the pubocervical fascia and a nice healthy bite of the uterosacral ligament that I have preserved the entire arch. I did not cut through it for that purpose. Now I'm going to go down through this uterosacral ligament you being careful not to incorporate the ureter. And I'm going to finish this double layer closure, incorporating um, the fascia, covering up over that first layer, making sure to bury my knot. And I've done a very good job here of a second layer closure. This really adds a lot to the value of our hysterectomy by a double layer closure. Now look at the effect here in the in the posterior look at the support look at minimal collateral spread of energy no char this is hysterectomy is done very efficiently of course these patients have way less pain they're discharged home the same day thank you